So when I started this channel a few years ago, I started with the express mission statement to celebrate what's good in comics while kind of staying away from what's bad. I wanted to keep focus on what out there in the world of comics is still good because it's something I'm passionate and care a lot about. But over the last few years since I've been doing this, they have given me less and less to celebrate. And comics really are un undeniably going down the drain in quality and in interest as reflected by their sales. So this forced me to ask the question, can comics still be good? Before we get into this conversation, my comic book, Malevolent Rising, number five is currently funding on Indiegogo. As of this recording, there's only two days, two days left to get your copy. So link in description, please check it out and on with my video. So I think there's a myriad of problems plaguing the Western comic book uh, industry right now, but some of the major ones are characters acting wildly out of character, uh, Changes being made to long-term established characters that just feel out of nowhere and make no sense. Unappealing, unrelatable, and unlikable new characters being introduced. And quite frankly, just some really unappealing artwork that matches these unimaginative stories. So it really warmed my heart when I found this comic book, The Me You Love in the Dark by Scotty Young. Um, this is the latest book, for, or this book came out from Image Comic a few weeks ago. And the first thing that hit me was the cover. The cover really jumped out at me. And as we're looking at it, it's a very kind of Neil Gaiman, creepy, haunted house, Halloween kind of feel for a book. And that's a vibe that I really like. And I think a lot of people do, too. Kind of a kind of a nightmare before Christmas, Guillermo del Toro kind of kind of feel to it. That Victorian house, the, the creepy dark artwork, the the creepy roots of those trees going down into the cover art. All very cool, very, very inviting. And it drew me in. So... The artwork on the inside was was really nice, and it's a very good very good example of how an artist can still be very stylized, but at the same time be very dynamic, be very effective storyteller. And they do this by getting the right the, the small things right. The anatomy is correct. The character designs are appealing. The colors are appropriate. The the use of color and shadow works. Uh, the angles they choose draw the eye through the panel. I mean, everything is done properly and yet it's still done stylistically which i think a lot of the modern artists these days are are forgetting one or two small elements just missing so meet ro ro is an artist who is suffering from a bit of art or a bit of creative block which i can relate to to make matters worse she's got a gallery opening coming up her patrons are expecting new uh, pieces of art and her agent is writing her about it so she decides to try to correct this by buying a house out in the middle of nowhere so that she can try to get over this this artist block that's in her head. As she tours the house, she finds just a connection to it. The house is perfect. It's everything that she's looking for. And the agent tells her that there is a troubling history that goes with the house. A lot of people even regard it as haunted. But Roe doesn't believe in such things, so she just doesn't care. She moves into the house, but her creative block continues. She try she tries to struggle. She drinks a lot, or she tries. She struggles. She drinks, but she can't come up with anything. And she starts talking to the house as if it's a character, because she remembers that her her realtors told her that there was a supernatural presence within the house. So eventually, those voices starting or those little conversations, voices start answering back. And are these voices in Rose's head, or is this the house? We don't know. I was actually going to review this book when it was complete and review the series, but with how bad everything has been as, as of late, I just thought highlighting something good was something that we needed, and this book was definitely good. Uh, the house itself is a creepy, atmospheric place, and it's isolated, and it's everything that you need for a good horror trope. It's big and open but in the middle of nowhere and and you get the feeling that if you are in danger there's nothing that's going to come around to help you the artist is in, insanely effective um it's moody it's dark it's it's interesting and it's dynamic all at the same time and when i think of books like i am starfire or uh just a lot of the other modern books out there uh, yeah, the artist did some interesting things and did a few things right, but at the same time, they did a few, they did a lot of things wrong. They, you know, either the art wasn't dynamic, or the panels don't flow, or it just wasn't interesting, or it just isn't appealing. And art or comic book is is less a form of art and more a form of illustration. So you're you're not trying to put some abstract thing if you abstract piece of work out. You're trying to 
draw something out there that conveys a story that can that a reader is going to look at and know what they're looking at. So one of the neat effects that the artist did was this kind of swirling white effect, which is supposed to indicate that shiver down your spine, those hairs sticking up on the back of your neck. It comes around whenever the ghost is around or whenever the, the entity, the spirit, whatever's in the house is supposed to be there. It, it always indicates, it's always indicated by that little swirly effect. And if Rose on panel, she's just kind of looking over her shoulder, just like you would if you go, if you entered into a, maybe a, a basement or an attic or an empty room, and you just feel that shiver come over you. And just imagine as an artist, you're being asked by a writer, draw a shiver up somebody's spine. That That's a tall order. And he found a way to do it effectively. So what a treasure it was for me to read this book. I read it, I actually sat and read it twice because it's been so long since I sat and read a book that just gripped me on every way that a comic book grips me. And that's what I like. The story drew me in. But before the story drew me in, the artwork drew me in. The cover got me to buy it. The, I, I flipped through it three or four times before I even read it just to enjoy, soak in the artwork and enjoy it without the context of the story involved because I wanted to see the raw art of it. And then the story, obviously, being the main attractor, just added to it. And it's a perfect marriage of storytelling and visual arts, which is what comic books is. So I wanted to do a quick video today. I want to highlight this. I really hope you guys can find a way to check out the, the Me You Love in the Dark. Um, obviously, I can't give a final verdict on it because the series still has uh, five books, I think, to go. I think it's a six-issue series. So I will definitely do a review of it when it's completed, but I wanted to highlight the first one. And honestly, in with books doing as badly as they are, when a good book comes along, I, I really don't want to promote it. And I really want to help it succeed. So, uh, and I really do think that there's a lot of creators out there that need to look at works like this and, and take notes, understand what good, not preachy, uh, competent and compelling storytelling really looks like and how art and story are supposed to marry together. Um, that's all I have for today. So if you pick this book up, I'd really like to know what you think of it. Um, and if you haven't picked it up, I, I really hope that you do. But if you've read it or if you don't want to read it, I'd like to hear in the comments of what your thoughts are on it. What did you think of it? What did you think of the review? Do you agree with it or disagree? Um, I really like to discuss it. This book, this book was cool. It spoke to me a bit. It gave me a kind of a nightmare before Christmas Eve Coraline vibe, which is of kind of Halloween October mood that I like. I almost kind of wish this book had come out in October. Uh, but you know, let's talk about all that in the comments below while you're down there, uh, hit like subscribe, help the channel grow. I really appreciate it. The channel's grown a lot the last few weeks and I appreciate you guys so much, um, for helping me do that. And obviously I do these videos for you guys so we can have these conversations cause I really enjoy talking about it and I really enjoy bringing it up to you. So, uh, thanks again for hanging in there with me a little bit rambly at the end. I appreciate it. And I'll talk to you in the next video. Bye.